Welcome to Saturday Morning Tutorials. Not enough time. That will be enough. Slu cannot die here today. I heard rumors. I knew you're coming. What have you heard? You're the hidden one. The head hunter. Slayer of the Goblin King. You took the cube of Poseidon and you stole the dragon sword. And now you come for Sluka's infinity power cell. And to kill Sluka, of course. <laughs> ah, it's not so easy, I think. The Goblin King is unprepared. Sluka is always prepared. <laughs> Prove it. Okay. I've severed your spine. Your cybernetic implants are keeping you on your feet, but you can't move them. <laughs> it's pointless. You're done. You've lost. <laughs> Thanks, Luca. Uh, today, maybe. Yes. You hear them on as well? What? <laughs> That was too close. I'm almost ready. Oh, you selfless heroes, you defenders of the crates. I wish you didn't have to constantly sacrifice your lives for us, but I do appreciate it. Sluka, rest in peace. Hope you're hope you're hanging out with Time Cop somewhere. He's not, they're dead. Anyway, whenever we're doing lightning effects, we always like to get some practical effects lighting on set using some strobes. A cool trick is to use two or more strobe lights coming from different angles that are out of sync with each other. You want them flashing at slightly different speeds. This is gonna make your lighting look less robotic and predictable and more chaotic and what's what rhymes with predictable but means the opposite. Uh, Nothing delectable. right. Delictable. Delictable? Delictable. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna make your lightning look less robotic and predictable and more chaotic and and I screwed it up. It's, <laughs> never mind. Shut up. <laughs> the strobes we used also happen to have a cool knob at the back which can control the speed. So on some shots, Adrian would use this knob to make the lighting flash faster, which would sync up with the intensity of Sluka's energy charging up. <laughs> we shot our footage pretty dark so that we'd really be able to see those strobe lights, but we can actually improve this a little in After Effects. Let's go ahead and add a curves effect and bring down the shadows. We can pump up the highlights a bit as well so we're not just darkening it all the way down. This is called an S-curve. See Ooh. the see the S? It's, it's how you add contrast and you make everything look cinematic. It's S for cinematic. <laughs> it's S for spelling. <laughs> Let's duplicate that footage and use the curves on that layer to really push up the highlights and make it bright. We can use a CC toner effect to turn this layer super blue, and we're gonna set it to a screen transfer mode and add a mask just around the parts that would be getting hit with some light from the energy ball. Now we've got a great foundation on which to add some lightning effects, which is going to look awesome. But first, let's get this trekking out of the way. This oh, is man. the boring parts of stick with us. In this <laughs> shot, we used Mocha to to track the arm, 
not the hand. The fingers are all kinds of funky by moving around independently of each other, but we really want the energy ball tied to the position and the rotation of Sluka's arm. The strobe lights made this a little bit wonky, but you know, it's passable. We actually didn't want the scale information, but in Mocha, if you want rotation, you gotta take scale as well. But that's easy to get rid of inside of After Effects. <laughs> after, you, after you apply the transform data inside of After Effects to a null, just delete the scale keyframes. We should easy. release we should release our own software called After Effects. <laughs> For the fingers, we just had to track each one of them by hand, which kind of sucks, but hey, that's just the world we live in, man. 2019. 2019, hand in hand. <laughs> For, the <Too> soon. <laughs> For the energy ball, we just used a clip from Footage Crate called Lightning Ball 1. You could, of course, also use one of the thousands of other options we have on the site, or you can build your own inside of After Effects. Uh -huh. We just parented that to the arm track and added a tint so we can recolor it later on. It's also brighter than we need, so we added a soft circle mask around the edges to tone it down a little bit. We'll make a new black solid for some lightning. We're gonna add the advanced lightning effect. The default glow that this comes with is so ugly. I hate it. So we're just gonna turn it off. Turn the radius and opacity all the way down. We'll go ahead and parent one end to the ball and one end to one of the fingers and change around the core settings until it starts to match. We'll also add a wiggle expression to the conductivity state so it moves around a little bit. If we check the box for composite on original, then we can duplicate the effect to add more lightning bolts on the exact same layer. We'll just change each one to a different finger. Since we have a wiggle on the conductivity state, each bolt is going to look different. Very cool. We'll want this layer on a screen or an add transfer mode so we can see right through it. I can see right through you and your lies, Chris. No, I, all, everything I said was accurate. Let's gather up all of our nulls and our lightning stuff and just pre-compose all of it. Now we can add our own glow that's going to look way better than that stupid default one in the lightning. I yeah, go so home, much. glow. Yeah, glow home. We'll use at least two instances of glow. One is going to be tight around the lightning and one is going to be big and wide. You can actually use more than two. The more you use, the better it's going to look as long as you don't let it blow out too much. We can also use a curves to add some really nice blue color to this. Adding a little bit of green to the highlights and taking out the red is going to make this look real good. <laughs> All right, next we want some big old bolts of lightning arching off of the energy ball. That's how I talk. <laughs> We're about to show you a really cool technique for automatically syncing up your lightning bolts to your footage, automagically. There's gonna be some complicated expressions, so if this isn't your thing, you can always do it with keyframes, but since we have 16 different lightning shots in this sketch, we found this expression to be a huge time saver. Let's take some of our footage and just look at it. Just just look at it. Look at that mustache. <laughs> anyway, we want to identify a spot where the strobe lights hit that would otherwise be in relative darkness. In this shot, Sluka's palm is going to be a great spot for this since we're aiming the light right at it. Duplicate the footage. It's not totally necessary to add a tint, but it does make it easier to see what we are doing. We'll then use a levels to crush the blacks and the whites so that the shadow is totally black and the light is totally white. We don't necessarily need to remove all the gray values in between. After that, we'll just pre-comp it and call it our light reference. We also want to make a new null, which we're going to call our light reference null. We need to place the anchor point of this null right over the palm and we're going to keyframe it to follow, but it does not need to be tracked in perfectly. Let's make a new black solid and apply the advanced lightning effect. We want it to be a strike and we'll tie one end of the lightning bolt to the energy ball and one end off screen. Get rid of that ugly glow as well again. Glow away. Glow away. Alt click the stopwatch next to the core radius and here we're going to add our expression. When adding expressions, all of your spelling and your capitalization and punctuation needs to be perfect or else it will not work. However, the newest version of After Effects makes it very easy to find your errors, if you have errors. Yeah, don't be afraid of expressions. 
They they do make sense. If anything, be afraid of vampires. Yeah, they don't have expressions. <laughs> First, we are going to set up a variable called target. A variable is just a word or a number or a letter. It, it could be anything really. It's small and all it does is represent something bigger and more complex. Type target equals and use the pick whip to select your light reference layer. Add a semicolon to end the line. Nothing has happened yet. This isn't our expression. It's just a variable that we can use within the actual expression. We need another variable as well. Type radius equals RGB2 with a capital T, HSL. Radius is the name of this new variable. You could have typed anything here because it's just a variable. RGB to HLS means that we're gonna be converting colors from being a mix of red, blue, and green channels to instead being hue, saturation, and lightness values. Lightness is the one that we're actually interested in here. Type open parentheses target dot sample image with a capital I, open parentheses again, and use the pick whip to grab your light reference nulls position value. Uh, add a comma and an open brackets, the number two, comma, two, and then close the brackets and close off both sets of parentheses. We're also gonna add another two, which is in brackets, and then we're gonna add a semicolon to finish off that line. What does this all mean? The word target in this line refers to the very first variable that we set up. Sample image is us telling the expression what to do. These first two twos refer to our sample area. Two by two gives us a sample size of four pixels. Two times two, four. If you want a softer transition, you can increase these numbers. They can be whatever you want. The final two refers to the lightness property, which is another word for brightness. Zero would have been the hue property, one is the saturation property, and two is the lightness. All right, so now we can write our actual expression. This is gonna be a linear expression. The linear expression, it just takes one set of values and then remaps them to another set of values. So we're gonna type linear, open up some parentheses, radius, uh, which here just refers to the variable that we just set up a little bit ago. Now we can add a comma and type our first set of values. Zero refers to black or uh, no lightness at all, comma one, which is gonna refer to maximum brightness or white. Now we're just gonna add values that we wanna change them to. We're gonna leave zero as zero and we're gonna map our max value to 10. Close off the parentheses and add a semicolon to end the line. Actually, since this is the last line, the expression will work without the semicolon, but it is good practice to always include it. So now when our reference area turns white, we're gonna get a lightning bolt. When it's black, we'll get nothing. And during those in between areas, we'll get some tiny skinny little baby bolts of lightning. If you want your lighting to be thicker, change the 10 to a larger number. And if you want it thinner, change the 10 to something smaller, like nine. <laughs> yeah, like nine. <laughs> We're gonna include the code in the description of this video if you wanna just copy it. But remember the names of your light reference layer and your light reference null have to match the code exactly or it won't work. We're just gonna cut off those guys. For Sluka mustache. <laughs> Mustache, Behind the scenes, Luca can't grow mustache. What? <laughs> Behind the scenes, Luca have poor genetics. Good, it's Luca back. Which one suits your personality? Um, I would have to say the first one, the pointy right. one, and I would like twirl it with my fingers. I'd probably make it a little more pointier. <laughs> you are a villain, so. Yes, that's cool. true. That's true. Maybe I'll use it to stop. Now that we have this expression written, we can copy it and paste it onto other stuff. As long as it's in the same comp with the same light reference layers. It's good to go. To add some more texture to the lightning glow, we used one of the smoky atmosphere clips and tinted it blue on an add transfer mode. We can paste the same expression that we just made onto the opacity value and it still works. The name radius that we used in the variable isn't gonna make sense anymore since we're pasting it on opacity and not on a radius. But but it doesn't matter since it's just a variable and it could have been anything, it works anyway. But right now it is giving us a maximum opacity of 10. So if we change the 10 in the expression to a 100, we're gonna get a more noticeable effect. So if you don't want it to be quite this extreme, you can turn it down to 50, you can turn it to whatever you want. We really love using these real lens flare clips alongside of CGI glowing effects. These really help to add some believability and realism to the shots. We can pick one and paste the exact same code into the opacity 
capacity and look at that, it works again. Nice. We didn't want to overdo it with the flares so we didn't put these in every single shot. For these cool shots of the hidden one at the end, we were referencing and, and paying hom homage, homage, homage? Homage. We were playing, homage. we were paying homage to uh, one Love of our favorite cheese. movies. Why don't you leave a comment in the comments and guess which movie it was. The person who gets it right has also seen this movie. <laughs> All of the lightning arcs in these shots were not made in After Effects. They were made by downloading them from Footage Crate. <laughs> so you can do the same if you like. And that does it. We will be back next week. Adrian, you want to go ahead and tease what the tutorial is? You know what? Sure. It's going to be the a cool vibranium shockwave from Black Panther. Yeah. We haven't done it yet. I hope it looks good, though. Yeah, so that's it. So we'll yeah. see you all next week. See you then. Subscribe if you want to see that. All right. We really hope that you guys enjoyed the tutorial. We appreciate you making it all the way to the end. We appreciate you buying a t-shirt. Oh, wait. You have it. <laughs> go buy a shirt. Buy a shirt and smash that like button. Yeah. Man, we, we kill more characters than Game of Thrones. Oh, jeez. This is bad. We're a bunch of monsters. We're running out. Yeah.